Wedding Bells Ahead by Arletta Richardson Chapter 10 Augusta Gets the News The children kept a wary eye on me when they arrived the next morning. I had been acting rather strangely, and I was sure that all but the very littlest ones knew what had taken place. Today I would have welcomed news from the Lawton house that Elizabeth had felt her father's wrath, but neither Carrie nor Julianne said anything in my hearing. Edward, however, had information that he was anxious to impart, and I had difficulty restraining him until morning prayers were over. "'My pa knows who set fire to the school,' he exclaimed. "'But he won't tell because it wouldn't serve any good purpose.' He looked triumphantly at Julianne, who turned away and stared out the window. "'But he remembers something else that could be included in our pageant.' "'That's fine, Edward. What is it?' The school board hired a man named Robert Roswell to rebuild the schoolhouse in 1875. Pa says Mr. Roswell made a new cornerstone and let everyone who was in the school that year put something inside it. Then he set it in the southwest corner. Pa says it wasn't to be opened until 100 years later. That will be 1975, Jamie said. There won't be any of us around to see. Thank heavens for that, I thought. I couldn't cope with any more buried treasures at the moment. But aloud I said, Some people live to be very old. Let's figure out how many years that is from now. Joel, come and put it on the board for us. Joel came up and wrote, 1975 minus 1892 equals 83. The children stared at the number silently. That's for ever. Hannah breathed. Not quite, I laughed. Do you know how to find out how old you'll be in 83 years? We can subtract the year we were born from 1975, Serena suggested. It would be faster to add how old you are now to 83, Prudence offered. I nodded. It will work either way. Why don't you figure it out? All was quiet as the children concentrated on their calculations. I'll never make it, George announced. I'll be 97 years old. I'll be 95, Joel sighed. I wish the school had burned 50 years earlier. If it was going to burn at all, he added hastily when I looked at him. We discovered that the youngest child would be 89 years old in 1975. How about you, Miss Odell? How old will you be in 1975? Toby wanted to know. Over 100 years, I said. I rather doubt that I'll be here for the opening. They looked at me as though they could see me aging before their eyes. Finally, Prudence broke the silence. Well, whoever is still alive can meet here at the school and get their grandchildren to whack the cornerstone open. She turned to Edward. Did your pa tell you what he put in there? Edward blushed. A valentine from his girlfriend. He wouldn't tell me who she was, just that it wasn't my ma. The children laughed and Elsie's eyes sparkled. When we have our pageant, Edward's pa will be here. And maybe his girlfriend. Someone might tell us who it was, she exclaimed. I wondered again if this had been a wise project to begin. We turned our attention to the daily lessons, and as the children worked, I thought of the revelation that lay ahead for Augusta. Len and I wanted Jerome to be there when we told her about her brother's marriage and the will. When we approached him that evening, Jerome agreed that Augusta would need advice, and he was willing to help her if she wanted him to. I'm not sure that Miss Harris will respond too kindly to my assistance, since I've twice made her the offer to buy her property, he said. One reason I wanted Len to search for the papers was to allay her suspicions that I might have engineered the find. There's a reason that the Lord allows circumstances to come into our lives, Len said. That tree could have gone over years ago, or it could have fallen the other way. I believe that all this happened now to teach individual lives, just as God planned. Jerome regarded Len thoughtfully, but he made no comment. Since I would be going home this weekend, we decided to meet on Monday evening and break the news to Augusta. We'll let her decide how and when to inform the gauges, Jerome suggested. It will be up to them to make the arrangements for her future welfare. He paused. 
I hope they don't consider moving her out of her home. They could legally do so. Len looked at him in astonishment. Neither old Mrs. Gage nor Frank would ever consider anything like that. Your Bible says that the love of money is the root of all evil, Jerome responded. The Gage family stands to come into a goodly portion of those roots. I'd be surprised if greed doesn't enter the picture someplace. Len shook his head. I think I know Frank better than that. I'll be very surprised if he does. Jerome Grayson has a hard time believing that the golden rule really works when it comes down to specific cases, I said to Sarah Jane when we rode home on Friday. He probably hasn't had a lot of opportunity to see it in action, Sarah Jane replied. Things can get a bit sticky when there's money involved. Now, for instance, if I had $10, I'd be happy to see that you had half, but if it got into the thousands, I might have to give it a little thought. Not me, I said. You're welcome to anything I have. Safe offer, Sarah Jane replied. Your worldly possessions are no greater than mine, but I'll settle for my handkerchief. You did wash it, didn't you? Augusta did, I sighed. I'm not looking forward to Monday, and I don't know what the news is going to do to her. She's a strong lady. I don't imagine she'll clap her hands for joy, but I don't think she'll faint either. Mrs. Williams thinks that Augusta had her eye on Frank Gage's uncle when they were in school. Do you ever wonder how things might have turned out if just a few details had been different? I've given it some thought, Sarah Jane admitted especially since I had a letter from Thomas yesterday saying that Russ Bradley is engaged. Who to? To whom? Sarah Jane corrected. She grinned. You really have had a hard week. You startled me. I defended myself. Who is Russ going to marry? Your friend, Clarice Owens. Who else? Don't let anyone tell you that persistence doesn't pay. That girl was determined. I let this sink in, remembering my struggle to overcome my hostility towards Clarice and win at least a grudging acceptance from her. When I didn't say anything, Sarah Jane inquired, Are you having second thoughts about turning him down? Never, I said definitely. I was thinking about her. You know she'll look more at home in that elegant place than I ever could. How could I manage a house full of servants? I'd be willing to give it my best shot, Sarah Jane mused. It's not likely to be one of my problems, either. Thomas is a dear, but he didn't choose wealthy ancestors, and he's certainly no financial wizard. I got as high a grade in math as he did. That's not saying a lot for either of us. We rounded a curve in the road, and the Clark's Lane came into sight. Are you going to tell your folks that you almost came back to live out your last days on the old home place? Asked Sarah Jane. Not yet, I replied. I'm afraid it would upset Ma. They think I've finally gotten past my foolish years and I'd hate to disillusion them. <laughs> your secret is safe with me, Sarah Jane laughed. I stopped the buggy in front of her gate and she took her things out. I'll come by later to see how your Ma is, she promised. It won't be much longer now, will it? This is the month. I'll be glad when it's over, and so will she, I'm sure. Reuben and Jenny were visiting with young Jacob, and I was glad to see them. Jacob will have an aunt younger than he is to boss around, I commented. Aunt? Reuben said. He might have an uncle he can clobber. You'll never convince Mabel of that, Pa put in, smiling at me. When are you getting married, Mabel? Jenny asked. We haven't decided on a date yet, possibly before school starts next fall, if we can get a house ready by then. That will be our last wedding, Ma said. Then she laughed and added, for 18 or 20 years anyway. The weekend was a quiet one, and as I was leaving, I reminded Pa to send word to me at once if the baby came. Three weeks yet at least, he predicted. But don't worry, you'll know all right. I'm not going to have time to worry over Ma and the new baby, I said to Sarah Jane on the way back to North Branch. Who knows what I'll have on my hands after we talk to Augusta tomorrow? 
I've really become very fond of her, and I don't like to see her upset. Augusta was surprised when Jerome Grayson came in with Len after supper on Monday, but she greeted him cordially enough. I haven't changed my mind, Mr. Grayson, she said. I hope you aren't counting on Len's help to convince me. No, Mrs. Harris, I've come for another reason this time. There's a legal matter that is going to need your attention, and I told Len that I'd be glad to assist you if you wish. Certainly can't think of any reason why I'd need a lawyer, Augusta responded. Always been able to take care of my own business. What is this matter, anyhow? Perhaps Mabel should tell you how the whole thing came to light, Len suggested. Augusta looked questioningly at me, and I began the story of the Elliot boys finding the box under the well house and bringing the papers to me. Jerome took the papers out and placed them on the table. This is a copy of the deed to the property, he explained, and with it a copy of your brother John's will. We waited silently as Augusta read the handwritten page. Her face paled, but there was no indication of surprise or shock. So, John did marry her before he left. There's no question about that, I suppose? She looked at Jerome. None at all, he replied. I saw the marriage record. As to the will, in a case where this much money and property is at stake, you would not be faulted for challenging it. It's possible that the Gages know no more about the marriage than your mother and you did. He paused, but Augustus said nothing, so he continued. If you wish to contest the will, the Gages must be informed so that they can retain legal counsel. In any event, they need to be told... Unless, of course, you choose to destroy this paper and carry on as though it had never existed. You mean, that's an option? Augusta asked. And more commonly pursued than you might suspect. It was by accident that this came to anyone's attention. Had it not been for the storm, it quite possibly would never have been found. The room was silent as Augusta walked to the window and stared out. Then she turned and said, Mr. Grayson... I would like to hire your services. End of chapter 10